Hey, it's Heather here. I know it's been a long time since my last video. What had happened was um, my phone just completely crashed. I mean, it literally just <laughs> crashed and it would not even come back on for me to get pictures off of it or anything. So it wasn't the battery. It was like the memory and everything dealing with the phone. Um, I was originally when I started the YouTube and started posting videos, um, I was doing it to help myself to relieve some stress for as far as like kind of just basically venting about what was going on with me each day and all the thoughts that go on inside of my head and it wasn't it wasn't I mean it was selfish in its own way but it, I would say it was like 50 50 because like half of it was selfish and like hey let me vent about how I feel because I have nobody that lets me do that like literally I've never met anybody that's like hey I'm gonna sit with you and just let you talk for 30 minutes to an hour every single day until you just feel better like I, I would adore to know somebody to have known somebody like that Una you just kick dirt all on me but I've never known anybody like that so anyways um <sighs> I don't know um but, uh, I've, I've never had anybody be that way towards me. I've never had anybody that cares or anybody that wants to listen. Um, uh, my mom, my dad, my grandmother, um, they were always too busy to just shut me down. And it wasn't even shut me down for as far as talking, but they would ask insignificant questions throughout the process of me just trying to talk. They would interrupt me with all these multiple questions. My grandmother's like a a pro at it. And she'll ask a question that she, even if I try to give her the explanation, it's not simplified because she's older. So what you could normally say to somebody of this generation and be like, yeah, my phone messed up because of this, you know, because it just crashed because of that. She's like, well, what does that mean? It's like... It's like breadcrumbs of questions. And so I would never be able to get out what I was trying to vent about or be upset about or talk about or whatever because with each question she would ask and I would try to answer, it would just turn into another question. And she still does that. And she doesn't even realize or care, I guess, that she does that and that it's annoying, basically. And, I mean, it is. It's, it's annoying when you just want to gripe. You know, you're just having a bad day or, or a bad moment or a bad hour or whatever and you just want to vent and somebody keeps asking questions and they just keep on asking questions. Because me, myself, like, I let a lot of people um, talk to me for the most part. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, I'm great at it or anything, but... Like, whenever I've had jobs and been at work and stuff and somebody be upset, I'm like, hey, what's wrong, you know? And they're like, oh, da 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 you know, and they go in. And about halfway in, you know, they'll be like, you know, or even 15 minutes in, they'll be like, you know, and it's after work or we're on break or whatever. I'm like, so what's this, you know? And they say it, and I always hold the answer that they give me. Like, it's like a test. And I hold the answer that they give me. And even if I don't fully understand the answer that they gave me. Because maybe I'm uneducated about the thing that they're talking about. Instead of blurting out, but why? And instead of being selfish and making it about myself and being like, but what does that mean? Or I don't understand, you know. I would always hold on to the answer that they gave me. Like, I respect that you answered my one question when I know that you're frustrated and I came to you to let you vent about whatever's bothering you, you know. And so I would just hold that answer until the end or until the next day or until the next week when I seen them again. And then I'd be like, okay, you're going to think I'm kind of stupid. But, uh, you know, whenever you were talking about this and that and, you know, like say it's something I've never done. Like say they were complaining about, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, mountain climbing or you know hiking like professionally or skateboarding 
or, you know, anything, or hell, even their car, you know, like, I mean, I know the basics of a car, you know, the motor, the engine, you know, the this, the that, you know, the frame, you know, <laughs> like, I know some things, but, you know, if they say something, I'm like, what's that? And they're like, oh, it leads, you know, this to that, to the power, power to the battery from the this and the that, I'd be like, oh, and so I'll just sit there, and I'll take, okay, I'm an idiot, basically, and I need to get them to elaborate more on that later on but right now in this moment I'm just being a friend to them and I'm just letting them vent about what they're upset about like that's my main goal in everything Clarabelle Clarabelle okay <sighs> good girl okay y'all stay back here but, um, anyways, I'm trying to not make this video really long, but anyways, um, so, that, that's just part of the way that I've dealt with people, and nobody's ever had time to give to me. Um, and most people are like that, sadly. Most people just take, you know, they just take what they can get. Oh, you're somebody that's nice, that can listen to me, vent about my problems, you know, but I don't really give a shit to hear about yours, is like the attitude and the reaction that I get most of the time and that might even be a reason why I kind of fall for people that tend to actually be able to listen to me you know is it's like wow you know hey you're capable of something that most people are not capable of which is having compassion for me you know towards me you know but um so anyways originally whenever I started doing these videos it was 50% just me gripping and venting, but also I did it 50% or at least 25%, I would say. So that way other people can know that they're not the only ones that might feel the same way that I do. They might, you know, be frustrated and irritated and nobody listens to them and they're always the person that listens, you know, they're always the kind of counselor top friend top person that's like hey you know what I feel like shit let me call so and so let me call Heather because you know she's gonna listen to me you know or even if she doesn't have the time because she's busy she'll tell me she's gonna call me back or she'll tell me well you're gonna have to wait because I'm busy right now but there will be a better time and she'll contact me and be like hey I know it's been two weeks but I'm here for you now so what's your, what's your complaint? What's your problem? You know, what do you need to vent about? What's your stress? You know, and all that. So that's the other reason that I did it. That's the other reason that I made YouTube videos and stuff like that. So it's like to be selfish, you know, and put it all out there and show that, and show that I'm human. Because apparently to some people, like my ex-husband, which... I, I don't even know where that's at, but anyways, him, my husband, because we never got divorced or whatever, but it's been so many years, but anyways, dealing with him, for instance, he was like, you're perfect one time to me, and then my ex, which is the father to uh, my kid, he even kind of was like, you're too good, basically, one day. And even though they've only said it like one day, when somebody says that to you, it sticks with you and it kind of frightens you or it does me because it's like, no, I'm not, you know, I make mistakes, you know, and like, do you know me? You know, like, have you looked at my whole entire life, you know, and, and then it's like, who are you to judge me? And then it kind of sets a standard and then you can't fulfill that standard and then when you can't fulfill that perfection standard that they've given to you, then when they realize you're not fulfilling it, then they get mad at you. And you're kind of like, <laughs> told you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're like, I told you, I got some issues, <laughs> you know, I'm human. And so that's another reason that I did it is because we're all human beings. We're all going to have insecurities. We're all going to have anger. We're all going to have, you know, narcissistic tendencies at times. We're all going to be very self-centered at times, you know, and stuff like that. But the thing is that I do, if anybody even gives a shit what I do, 
is I try to steer clear of those bad things as much as possible. So when people look, when onlookers look at me and they're like, oh, she's just a brat that's got her way and had a great life. And, you know, like she, she just has gotten everything with such ease and I'm so jealous and envious of her. I have gotten in my life what is, you know, due to me, you know, in this lifetime. And then even after that, whenever you die, you know, judgment day and stuff like that, if you believe in God, and even if you don't, you know, and you believe we all go, you know, and it's just like nothingness, then that's what you deserve, you know, and that's what we all deserve. And so if you want to put yourself in a box of everybody deserves that, regardless of what they do, and you want to let that spin you into you being a bad person and doing the worst things possible and being mean, you know, because, hey, we're just all going into nothingness afterwards. If you want to do that, hey, man, that's up to you. You know, you're entitled to your own opinion and stuff like that. I'm not going to sit here and hold it against you. I'm not going to argue with you. But I'm not going to sit around and tolerate you every day or every week or something like that. Because I want to be around people that are going to help me to grow. Instead of people that are going to keep me stagnant or keep me in the back. And that's one reason that even marriages, in my opinion, fail. Is because one person wants everything to stay the same. And in all honesty, if I were to say it, dealing with me and my husband that I'm technically still married to... He wanted everything to stay the same. He was happy that I didn't have a license. He was happy I didn't drive. He was happy that I didn't work. And even if he were to hear that, he'd be like, no, it wasn't because he can't admit it to himself. But he liked our marriage the way it was for the first year. And the only way something can stay the same as what it is, is if you stop it from growing. And I didn't want to stop it from growing. I wanted it to grow and I wanted us to grow better together. But he opted out of that when he abandoned me and my daughter. And so here I am, basically. But, um, and I mean, it just, it is what it is, you know. Um, but anyways, um, All I know is that I can't control people. And so during this whole time that I've been without a phone, because I was without a phone for like three months, and when my phone crashed, at first I was so mad, just like some of my uh, videos where I'm just so mad and I'm just so angry. But I'm venting in that way. Well, because I didn't have that anymore, instead I started writing in notebooks. I have two notebooks that are completely full, front and back, of me just, I mean, just, you know cussing and everything else like are you fucking kidding me i can't believe this shit you know and everything else like i'm just mad as hell and you know i didn't sit there and write in them every single second of the day you know just like i don't sit here and make youtube videos every single second of the day when i have made them on a regular basis because i was making them daily for a year but then my year got messed up because i lost my phone and um it was a phone that my father had bought me and everything else um, I went out and I bought myself a phone with what little bit of tax money I did get back. And so that's how I have this phone now. But, um, <clears throat> I'm grateful now looking back that I had that break, that I had that moment in time without a phone. So that way I could get back into myself, I guess you could say, and not in a selfish way, but just in a healing and taking care of myself type kind of environment I guess but at first I was so mad just that I didn't have a phone then my grandmother god she's like well I've thought about buying you one and I'm like well do what you want to do and so every time she went grocery shopping she did what she wanted to do you know or every time she went shopping she did what she wanted to do and she didn't want to buy me a phone and I was like okay you're doing what you want to do I'm not going to get mad at you for doing what you want to do but I'm not going to let you get away, you know, with the responsibility of, you know, if you're upsetting me, you know, or not, you know. And a lesser, more immature person would be very upset that she didn't get on the phone. I'm not even upset, you know. I mean, I was slightly, 
But then I was like, you know what? I don't even give a shit, you know? Like, I really, you know, I was like, I don't even give a shit. Because we, me and my daughter, there's many years we've went without a phone. And in all honesty, when we went without a phone, our life was better. And that's even like people that say, oh, they want to struggle real hard, you know. And it makes life better. It makes you more appreciative is what it does. It makes you more grateful is what it does. You know, that some people are not, you know, they're missing out on whenever they hear people say that. They're like, oh my God, you know, you want your life to be harder? It keeps it in perspective. It keeps life in perspective. When you know that you have to struggle to make things work, it makes you realize, wait, that, that's what I'm supposed to do. And that makes you realize even why some people are so frustrated and angry is because they're not struggling as hard as they can. And so instead of even being like me, instead of venting about what frustration and anger, you know, and stuff like that, because I have struggled, but then sometimes I haven't, you know, I've had a decent life. But there's some people that they never have to struggle for anything. They always have that back up there. They always have mommy and daddy taking care of them or whoever. And even though to a degree some people would say that about me, but my parents don't kiss my ass. If they did, they never would have took my kid from me. If they did, when I was a little girl and I asked them for something, they would have gave me my way, you know. And that's the reason I didn't do it for my kid is because I want my kid to have a level of perspective that some people don't. And so anyway, some people, they get mad, and that, that anger, instead of them ever letting it out, they bottle it up, they keep it in, and it makes them so bitter and so mean, and then they become vengeful, and they become where they're like, oh, you hurt my feelings, so now I'm going to make sure to hurt yours, you know, and they become just vengeful, they seek revenge, and they even do it in such a way sometimes that it's like so below the belt you know and below the radar that if you're not intelligent enough to see it you'll never notice that they're doing it and you'll go oh it's just coincidental that every time that you know they come over and visit me you know and they talk to me about this that a week later that you know uh my neighbor uh, you know, if hears about it or whatever, you know, it's just coincidental when instead they might be the person going and telling your neighbor everything you said, you know, and they try to make you feel insecure in that instance, you know, and that's just an example. That's another thing that I've ever thought of anybody. And that's the thing too, I've noticed. Um, I noticed a comment from Eddie on my last video and he's like pinpointing everything that I said and taking it in context that um, I wouldn't recommend him taking it. And what I mean by that is it's kind of like, oh, this, me. Oh, this, me. Oh, this, me. I didn't mean, I didn't mean, I didn't mean. Whenever I make these videos, Eddie, or anybody, I am not making the video based upon my sole interaction with one person. Um... Even me calling you out right now. I, and I'm not trying to be manipulative in that way. Because I've had people accuse me of that. They're like, oh, well, when you make it broad term talking about everybody, you're just trying to manipulate and say something hateful about somebody behind their back. And I actually have a great example to give this. Um, I think it was Joyce Meyer that I watched that said this thing that I'll, I'll try to give it the way that she did. But Lord knows... <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, I can't do anything verbatim, but, um, anyways, uh, if there is something that I say in my video that, and for as far as Eddie, for as far as I know, nothing I said in my previous, my last one a few months ago offended him, um, he didn't act like it was offensive, he was just like, you know, hey, sorry, hey, sorry, hey, sorry, kinda, and I haven't even responded back because I've been staying kind of low since I got the phone. Because I'm like, I don't even know if I want to have a phone. Because I was kind of getting happier without the phone. And I didn't feel I have to worry about the world and people and stuff like that. And so I might, I might end up becoming reclusive like that. And I might get rid of this phone even. But um, anyways. Oh, it's getting so cold out here. <laughs> should have brought my jacket but um 
anyways, uh, he was like, you know, I don't want to call him out and make it seem bad. You know, it's not bad because I've done it too. And as a matter of fact, I even did it in the video that he commented on or whatever, where I'm just like, uh, you know, this, 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 you know, about, you know, the person or the situation or whatever, you know, and stuff like that. Um, sorry, I'm kind of right now. My mind's kind of lagging because I'm trying to get so much bottled up into one little casing. But, um, anyways, he, he was taking everything like as if I was saying everything directly to him. Or at least that's the way that I perceived it whenever I glanced at the message or the comment that he wrote up under the video. And I was like, that ain't even about you, son. You know, like that that's what went through my head. It's like, dude, really? That ain't even about you. And that's the thing is I am such a speaker in the way that I do that. And it's not because I'm trying to be manipulative or control or anything like that. Or even tiptoe. I've heard people be like, well, you're just trying to please people. Or you're just trying to tiptoe around everybody's feelings. No. I'm just being myself, damn it. And I'm a compassionate-ass person. And I don't like to watch people attack other people. And I would never in a million years... Well, I, I don't like to attack people. I'm not very good at being confrontational. Um, in a way that is... Um, not bare minimum natural type thing. Um, if I'm going to fight about something, I'm going to literally, more than likely, beat the shit out of you, fight about it. And I don't like to fight at all. I think fighting is stupid. So instead, I would rather just try to talk logically to you about it and about your emotions and so anyways that's just me but anyways back to the thing that Joyce Meyer said um one night whenever I was flipping through tv and stuff like that and I've been watching Trinity Broadcasting Network a lot and everything but um and that's just that's just what I did you know and I haven't become some holy religious person you know that's like oh now I'm a Christian and I'm this and that even though some people would say that I am but I don't, I don't feel that way. If somebody asks me what I am, I'm just like, well, I believe in God and I'm spiritual. I don't follow any set religion. I don't follow the rules. And even when I watch Trinity Broadcasting Network and they're like, you know, getting a, like Joel Olstein, getting a good Bible-based church. I'm like, ha, ha, you funny. <laughs> I'm like, where is one here for starters where I live? That's what goes through my mind. And then I'm like, I might end up smacking somebody with a Bible if I go up in there. And I don't, I don't think I'm ready for that right now. Because some people are very critical and very judgmental and very harsh that are in religions. Because it puts them in a box. And it makes them think that they have to stay inside the box. And that everything outside of the box is bad. But yet, if you really follow any religion, every religion leads to hey, there's going to be an end time. And in so, of there being an end time, it's like, okay, there's going to be an end time, whether it's just the world just poof, goes away, you know, or asteroid hits, you know, or whatever and all that, or revelations happens. But either way, there's going to be some type of end. Most people will kind of, you know, say that. And even um, Jennifer, she would be like, you know, uh, she, she recycles. She, she likes to recycle. And so she, you know, part of her is like, oh, you know, global warming and all that and everything and stuff like that. So, so if we keep doing something that we're already doing, it's eventually going to end. And in that, most religions are like, hey, you know, believe in God, trust in God. Well, if you believe in God and trust in God, God says, you know, hey, the ending will come. And he also says, you know, every bad thing that happens, I will turn to good. So if you believe in God, even in that, though, like if you believe in God, then you're supposed to believe that the end of the world will come. And when the end of the world comes, I actually just said this to this girl that's on Amino. Uh, I just got done chatting with. But um, if you know it's going to come, 
when you read about it, or even when you hear about an asteroid hitting the Earth, you know, it's not like, oh, this rainbow sunshine butterfly unicorn asteroid hits the Earth and the Earth becomes peace and hippies and love and joy. You know, no, it doesn't become that. It's bad. It's negative. It's not good. And so whenever we see negative things happening in everyday life and we go out and it's just negative, you know, and it's just bad and it keeps becoming worse if you believe in God or whatever, you're supposed to be at peace. You're supposed to be at ease. You're supposed to be like, well, you know, I'm over here worshiping God, but they're over there worshiping Satan, you know, or they're over there just being a bad person instead of getting mad at them and screaming at them and yelling at them and persecuting them, you know, and all this, instead of getting mad at them and everything, why don't I just say, hey, you know, maybe your life would be a little bit better if you didn't do that, but if you want to continue doing that, okay, but just know that that's one reason that you're not at peace, you know, with yourself, with your internal thinking, you know, and that's the reason you're suffering from whatever you're suffering from, you know, and so maybe... You know, I'm just trying to help you, but if you don't want to take it that way and you think I'm being mean, then okay. But I'm not, because I'm not stuck in a box of religion that tells me, because the religion itself is like, hey, you know, bad people, stay away from them, and stuff like that. But anyways, God, I'm coming up on 30 minutes making this. I did not want to make this this long, but, um... So anyways, that's where I've been. I've been without a phone. Um, I appreciated the time that I was without a phone. Um, I got to go back to relearn. Oh, that thing that Joyce Meyer said was um, that if she's like up on stage, she said something along the lines of like, if she's up on stage and she says something and it upsets you, but it's not directed at you, the reason it upsets you is because it is part of you that, like, you're living. Like, if she sat up there and she said, you know, basically, like, like, let's give an example, you know, hey, stop being greedy, you know, and if you're sitting there and you're in the audience and you're like, ooh, you know, that made me mad, you know, but she's talking to, you know, all these thousands of people, the reason it makes you mad is because that is God, you know, or that is your higher self or the higher power basically being like, you're being greedy and you need to stop it. So it's, it's a instruction from a higher power or yourself that you need to work on that. You need to work on that. So anytime somebody makes you feel insecure, it's because it's something that, if it really irks you on the inside, it's because it's something that you need to work on. Now, sometimes there's mean people in the world that they do try to make you feel insecure. And they don't even realize that they're being mean half the time. Like my grandmother, just a second ago. Uh, she said something to me that was a judgment. Um, and I was just like... Ugh, you know, and I didn't say anything to her, but I was just like, oh my God. And then I was like, how can I try to get this through her head and explain this to her? And so I was like, you know, use your words, Heather, <laughs> you know, which I've been doing this my whole life, you know, use your words because I love my family. I don't want to kill my family. I don't want to have my family arrested. I want to forgive my family when they sin, and I want us to be a closer family. And I want everybody in the world to be that way with their families. Um, I even have, you know, tried to not just reason with my own family, but even with my husband when I was with him. And But after so many years, you know, it's just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm so over this. Like, you want me to sit and be punished, you know, and live alone while you're out there and you feel good that you're married, you know? Like, no, it doesn't work like that. You didn't get married just to brag, you know, or have something to be like, yeah, I've been married before. It's not a bragging thing, you know? And who was it? Um, Steven. I put the N on. Steven, because <laughs> I watched one of those episodes, but Steven Furtick, um, he's also like a pastor, and on Trinity Broadcasting, and um, anyways, 
Girls, come over here so I know where you're at, please. Uh-huh. Sneaky, sneaky. I seen that. Thank you. Oh, so happy. <laughs> but um, anyways, Stephen uh, Furtick, I seen this, what was it, meant to be sermon that he talked about. And it was talking about marriage. And he was talking about the word covenant. And uh, he said that, what was it? And this just came on, I think, just yesterday or last night or something. But anyways, on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. But it was like, used to, whenever people made a covenant back in the day, they would take, like, for instance, a bull and cut it in half. And they would walk between it seven times. And they would say, okay, if I break this covenant, then this is what will happen to me. So here's this bull that we just cut in half. And you're saying... If I break this and give up on it and don't fulfill my duties and don't do my part that I'm supposed to, then I'm asking God to condemn me and to do this to me. And whenever he said that and he was talking about how there's some people that take marriage lightly and others that don't, and that's the reason marriages fall apart, he kind of mentioned a little bit about that. Anyways... I thought, oh my God, you know, like that's my husband that I did marry. When I married my husband, it was just something to do to him. It was what people do. It was what people talk about. It was just a normal thing. And I tried, even when we were dating, to discuss this with him and be like, marriage is very serious. Do you understand that? And he's like, yeah, I do. But yet, two years later, he abandoned me and my daughter, and that's been almost seven years ago, I think, that he's been gone. Is that right? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. He, he abandoned us, and he has left us alone for seven years. Instead of staying around to work on the situation. And then I'm already a person that I deal with abandonment issues. And even if he didn't know that, like, verbally, like me saying it, there's a part of his subconscious mind that picked up on that while we were together. And so that's the reason he did that to me and to my daughter, because she's been abandoned, too, by her biological father. And even though he hasn't left the area, he still has not been a father figure to her, so that is still abandonment. It's emotional and, you know, financial abandonment. And it's just, you know, he didn't even care about her feelings any at all. He didn't even care to tell her he loved her once a year, you know, her father. And so he picked up on that, my husband did, and he's like, ooh, I'm really going to punish them because they hurt me. And instead of him being bold enough to sit down with me and tell me what our problems were, but the thing is, also, is I take things in, uh, what is it, stride? And so I had done sat there in two years of marriage with this man and dealt with so many things that he had done that had hurt me and I didn't say anything to him. I just was, well, shit, that kind of hurt. Well, damn, that kind of hurt. And I would just go on. I would let it go like, like water off a duck's back. I would just, you know, let it go. I wouldn't go to him, you know, and it's not because I didn't trust him, but it's because the marriage, the covenant, of the marriage and his happiness and us being good together was more important to me than my own selfishness and my own self. And so I would just let it go. But whenever he did try to sit down with me like six months before he abandoned us and be like, you hurt my feelings about this. And I was like, oh, so, so we're going to start being selfish and say, you know, you hurt my feelings about this because he didn't just say it once and me explain and talk and all that. It's like he said it, but he was not willing to listen. He was not willing to have any compassion for me because he's, he was selfish. And you cannot be in a marriage if you are a selfish person. You, you can only be in marriage if you're compassionate. And you're only going to have successful marriages if you're compassionate. And so anyways, um, like you have to be, you have to be forgiving and stuff like that. But 
Anyways, so he wasn't willing to do that. And he was wanting to cross his arms like a brat, like a kid. You know, that's an example that I give on a lot of people, you know, or situations. Even myself. So, I'm not without. But anyways, he wanted to cross his arms like a big old kid, you know, and be like, my way, you know, and I didn't get my way, and so now I'm mad, and fuck you. And so that's that's what he did. And he's like, fuck you. And then the thing is, too, is during the seven years that he's been gone... He has literally called and tried to stir up problems for me. I mean, just emotional problems for me. He's trying to hit me below the belt. He's trying to hit me where it hurts. He tries to make me feel insecure about things. He'll he'll say something, and then he insults me right after he says it. And he told me after like a few months of our marriage, he's like, well, my dad told me that you never compliment a woman a lot because if you do, her head will get too big, meaning she'll get too prideful, and she'll think that she's better than you, and then she'll end up walking off and leaving you because she'll be like, you know what, I am better than him, and she'll end up walking off and leaving you. And when he told me that, he's, and he, he said that, and he said also, so I was taught that for like every one compliment that you give your wife, you're supposed to give her four insults. So it's like, Hey, thanks for cooking supper, but you know what? The food's too salty. I asked you for steak instead of pork chops, you know. Um, The tea's too sweet, and you left the oven on, you know, like. And so that's what his, he said that his father had taught him. And when he told me that, I was like, basically kind of like, I want a divorce right now. If I would have known that about you beforehand... There is no way in friggin' hell that I would have married you because I know who I am. I know my battles. I know what I'm dealing with, and I know what I need in my life, and I sure as hell don't need somebody insulting me and cutting me down because I've already had that. And even though some people are like, well, if you've already had it, then you should be great at living through it because it was preparing you to live through the same shit later on. Not in my marriage, it wasn't. Not in nobody's marriage. Marriage is not supposed to be something that you suffer through. It's supposed to be something that you grow through, that you enjoy. That even on the bad days, you look back and you laugh about it. You know? And like, some people just don't get that. So anyways, that's a spiel about my marriage and some things that I heard. But anyways, so Joyce Meyer, um, she was standing on stage and she said that about, like I said, you know, dealing with, um, if I say something and it offends you, but I didn't say it directly at you, that's because it's something you need to work out in yourself. And when she said that, that was so profound for me because of what I've been doing, getting on here, making YouTube videos and gripping about things and stuff. And so I was just like, oh my God, she hit the nail on the head. I needed that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and I was like, yes, you know. And the same with when um, Stephen Furtick come on and was talking about, you know, that dealing with marriage. I mean, and it kind of made me feel bad a little because I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, well, I... I don't want to be married to my husband anymore. I fucking hate him, you know? Like, there's a part of me that's like, I really... He left us for seven years. How am I supposed to forgive that? You know? He, like, you know, it's not like I left him, you know, and then, you know, I, you know, (laughs) like, he left us, you know? And I'm like, (coughs) compassion, you know? Could I ever forgive him? (coughs) but the thing is is he has no compassion for me he knows how to pretend oh he's excellent at pretending to have compassion for people (coughs) and sadly a lot of people are good at that a lot of people are good at pretending to have compassion Because it has been, like, um, sold and manufactured and put in a box, you know. And, like, this makes you a good person, you know. If If you look like you're compassionate, then it makes you a good person. And so people have bought it, but they don't really get it, you know. They don't really understand it, you know. And that's even like, you know, um, eating anything, you know, anything that you eat, if you don't understand how it processes in the body, then you don't understand how it processes in the body. (coughs) And so we're kind of, even though we are in a society now that has, um, 
access to every um, type of knowledge in existence because of phones and internet, even though we have that, most of us are not using it the way it was intended or the way that we need to for the world to be a better place and for people to be better human beings. And um, I'll even give another, you know, somebody that I've watched or whatever, um, Ben Corson. Um, I watched him and he was like, yeah, you know, uh, you're supposed to pay this much money on this one sermon that he gave. He's like, yeah, you're supposed to pay so much money and go into debt and everything else. So that way um, you go into debt, go into college and paying for it. So that way you can learn to be this or learn to be that or learn this, you know, or that or whatever. And he's like, but you don't, you know, people have forgot that, heck, you can learn that just by going to the library. You can learn that if you want to. And even me, myself, um, one video that I made at one point in time, I don't want to say I said something similar, but whenever he said that, I was like, oh my God, somebody that gets me. I was just like, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I was like, yes, you understand it, you know, <clears throat> because me with self-help, and stuff like that. And even the reason I started doing YouTube videos. And I'm sorry that you can't see me. Because it's dark. But um, even dealing with that and everything. Um, like for instance. When I'm angry. I look for ways to handle my anger. I don't look for ways to show everybody. But I did with YouTube. So I'll, I'll, I'll you know say oh I'm a bad person for that you know or whatever you want to say but anyways when I was a little girl for instance because you know I didn't YouTube Facebook all that whatever <laughs> uh uh so I would self reflect a lot when I was a little kid so when I would get mad at, about something that I rightfully am you know I should be able to get mad about you know like say somebody stole my money Oh, God, I don't know how many times my parents stole my money when I was a kid. Because my grandfather used to give me $2 every Saturday. And they, oh, God, it still makes me mad. But I'd get mad, and I, when I was real little, I'd try to retaliate. I'd try to let them know, you know, that ain't right, and that's mad. Uh, you know, that made me mad, and it hurt my feelings. And they would, we don't care. So then I'd self-reflect, wait, why do they not care? And then I would listen to conversations, and I'm like, okay, they basically they love money more than they do me because money's what supposedly in their minds makes the world go around, which I completely and totally disagree with. But anyways, um, and so, well, if they take my money from me, then they think that that's me just as good as me telling them that I love them. So, okay, they stole my money, so, well, I guess at least they think that I love them. And that's really fucked up to say, I know it is, but what I'm getting at, the point of me telling that story and everything, is it's like, because I would self-reflect, and there's a lot of people that they're so looking outside of themselves and reflecting on the things outside of themselves, that they forget to do the self-reflection, and that's where they're messed up at, you know, and so you have to learn to do that. And then you have to learn to be a big girl, you know, basically, and figure things out by yourself. That's like my grandmother. Um, originally, when I came to live here, she's like, oh, I'm going to move out and let you have it. And I'm like, okay. But then she's like, but how are you going to pay the bills? I'm like, don't worry about it. Because I'm very, I'm just a very self-reliant person because I've done so much self-reflection. I'm like, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. And instead, she's like, no, I do worry about it. I'm always going to worry about it. Da -da 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 -da. I don't think I should leave because this, that, da -da 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 -da. and I'm like, why don't you just admit you wasn't ever going to leave and that you lied to me, you know, or admit that you're just trying to control a situation that's out of your control, you know, like, just admit it and let's, let's not harp on it anymore because I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm upset about it, but it ain't the first upset in my life. So there you go. There you have it. <clears throat> but um that's even like I get mad or upset or whatever and now that I've had a phone and stuff and this previous year when I had a phone it was like hey I'm really mad hmm. google search 
how to handle anger. You know, hmm, read a paragraph, you know, or an article, or watch a video, you know, and see what works best for me, because I might do better with an instructional video that's like, here are five steps in how to forget that you're angry, you know, like meditation, or here are five steps in how to realize why you're angry and realize what you can do about it. Or here is just a funny video to take your mind off of why you're angry. And so, you know, or here's some funny this or whatever. And so I find what works for me. And that has become the ultimate um, thing that the world tries to take from you. And because the world in a whole has kind of tried to attack everybody with that, you know, like, oh, you shouldn't find what works for you. No, we're going to tell you what works for you. No, you're not. Because even if it works for you, it may not work for me. And it's okay. It's okay if it what works for me doesn't work for you. It doesn't make you a bad person. You know, and that's just like religion. You know, if religion works for you, it works for you. If worshiping Satan works for you, hey, go for it. You know, I mean, I hate to say that, but in truth, whatever works for you, for you to feel at peace, you know, for you to feel like you're doing your job, you know, because there's some people that, yeah, they're put on the world to be bad, you know, or in the earth to be bad people. You know, we know bad people exist. And we're always, you know, we're always, well, why do they exist, you know? They do because it's it's in their nature and some of them are at peace with it. The mass majority of them, though, aren't because they have a guilty conscience because they know they shouldn't have done it. You know, and that's just like even you can be good on the good side of things and you can still have a guilty conscience about something that you're doing that it's what worked for your buddy over here. You know, like say... For instance, you have a bunch of decorations, you know, for holidays. And it's like, hey, my buddy bought him or built him a little building to put his decorations out in when they weren't using them and it's on his property. Okay, that might work for him because he might be good and he might have the money to buy the timber to build the building or to pay for the building, but it might be better for you to go rent a building off of your property, you know, like a mini warehouse, and it's okay. It doesn't make you a bad person because you rented a mini warehouse instead of having a building, you know, and it doesn't make the person that has a built, it doesn't make anybody any better. And so that, that's basically what the world tries to sell to you is, you know, hey, I'm better than you. And we, we've got to get out of that lie. We really do. And nobody is better than anybody, you know, and like, we just have to do what's good for us. And I don't even mean that in a selfish way. I don't mean go out here and force yourself upon others. I don't mean to go out here and be um, mean and hateful and vengeful and steal and cheat and lie. But if you want to do that at the same time, hey, I can't control you. Whenever we die, I ain't got to be responsible for your ass. I don't even care if you're my kid, my dog, my cat, my husband. You know, I ain't got to be responsible for you whenever, you know, my life ends. I got to be responsible for me. I got to be responsible for what I did, not what you did, you know. Yeah, if you're family, then yeah, you're tied closer to me. And so I'm a little bit responsible for you, but I'm not, I can't live your life for you. And so if you feel like it's right to go left... But it's right for me to take the right path, you know, and you take the left path, you know, and somebody else and who's he says, what's it went down the middle path and then somebody went backwards and the other person went, you know, I mean, it, do, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And we live in such a world of like, hey, let me compare you to me and me to you and everybody to everybody. But that's not the way that we're supposed to do it. We're just supposed to walk through life. And do what we feel comfortable doing. What puts us at peace on the inside. And that is what our purpose is. That's how you find your purpose and who you're supposed to be. And I know that it's hard whenever you have people yelling at you. And trying to even tell you what to do. 
And even when they try to tell you what to do and they're trying to say, well, I'm just telling you because I just want to help you. You know, yeah, have compassion for those people. Have patience. You know, don't bite their head off and scream at them. But at the same time, you need to learn to have the self-confidence within yourself to still just go ahead and do what you know is the right thing to do. What you know is going to put you at peace. Not what's going to make them feel better, you know, but what's going to make you feel at peace with yourself. And so that that's one thing that I would say to everybody. But I'm coming up on 50 minutes. Um... I don't even know if I'll ever make another YouTube video. I'm just being honest. Um, because, I mean, I done had almost reached my goal of one year of making YouTube videos anyways. The reason I put them out there, you know, like I said, you know, dealing with my anger. But also just kind of being like, hey, people, you're not the only one dealing with stuff. So, I hope, you know, even though I only have 22 subscribers, hey, whatever, you know. Am I saying I'll never do a YouTube video again? I don't know. I don't know. I cannot speak for tomorrow. I cannot speak for next year. I cannot speak for 10 years from now. I can tell you all my plans, hope and, hopes, and dreams, but does it matter to you? And I'm not saying that in a hateful way like, you know, I think it should matter to you and I think you should care. To an extent, yes, it's nice that if you do care and everything, but like I said, you know, what works for me you know, it may not work for you, you know, and we need to get out of this, let me manipulate everybody around me to benefit me, like mentality that most of us stay in, it's like, ooh, let me, let me find a way for it to benefit me, you know, everything about, you know, A, B, C, and this person there, and da, 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 you know, and people have learned to try to do that. And instead of doing that, just, just benefit yourself, you know. But don't do it with hate. Don't do it with vengefulness, you know. And just do it with kindness and compassion, you know. And you'll get a lot further anyways if you try to do it with kindness and compassion versus hate and all that and everything. But I'm going to end it. I'm so sorry that you can't see me and I don't have, like, any type of light out here to cut on and everything. But, um... Just work on yourself. Stop focusing on everybody else. Work on yourself. Work on your own problems. Focus on yourself. But not so much that you hide in your bedroom all day and you're the only thing that you think about for 10 years, you know? But take time to, I guess, like meditate on yourself and what you really want and who you really are and what really makes you feel good, you know? And be okay with it. Even if the world tells you not to be. Be okay with yourself. But other than that, I'm going to let you go. I might catch you later. I might shoot another video. I might not. And if not, then this is like, you know, peace out. Take care. Love you. You know, and if you got any comments, you can drop them down below. I might respond and I might not. You know, don't make your joy come from an action that I do to you. Don't expect, like even if I was like somebody that's like, hey, I love you every single day, don't depend upon that. Because one day I might not tell you, you know, I love you and I don't want it to devastate you, you know, because I want you to be independent enough and self-reliant enough that you'll be okay without me. And that's another reason that my parents kind of hated the way that I raised my kid and society hates the way that I raised my kid and everything, in my opinion, because the way that they allowed them to take her from me is because I was raising her with that mentality. You know, like, baby girl, you know, you're getting older now, learn to be self-reliant. And there's something else that I'd like to say, but it takes so long, so I might make another video talking about it, about um, back in the day and how you know, people had certain trades that their families stuck within and about how with each generation the trade became that much more masterful and better, but about how now we don't do that because we're all sprawled out, you know, just doing what we can to survive. So I guess I said it there within a nutshell, and so maybe I won't make another video. I don't know. But I hope everybody's doing good. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what your background is 
what your sexual orientation is, you know, or anything like that. I, I don't care, and I don't mean it in a good way, and I don't even mean it in a bad way. But I mean that I respect life. I respect human life. I respect the earth. I respect plant life. I respect animals. And even if I don't do it in the way that you do, because maybe you recycle and I don't, I respect things. I really do. And that's one of the biggest things that everybody needs to do is everybody needs to learn how to respect things in their own way. And so I respect you if nobody else does. I don't care if you're two. I don't care if you're a fetus in your mom's belly. I don't care if you're 55. I don't care if you're 95. I don't care if you're 102. I respect you. I care, you know, and stuff like that. Like, I'm just... You know, that's who I am, and that's who I'll always be, you know, and so ain't nothing going to change it. So take care, and I'll catch you later. Bye.